Today on Tricro Studios, we take a look at explorers and should you own one. Now very quickly, this is not an explorer. This is actually an XP standard. Currently, I do not own any Gibson explorers. However, if you look here and look here, I've owned them in the past. The problem with them, um, I find is that they over lacquer it. They treat it like it's a lower end, like it's a studio type model. So the necks are usually over lacquered. Whereas if you get like a custom shop um, or like a special edition where they properly lacquered the neck, you don't have that issue. So in this video, I basically want to just go over um, some things that if you're looking to buy an Explorer that might help you um, and might actually possibly turn you off of getting one. I'm not going to play in this video. So that means a lot of people have just turned right out. Um, but I'm gonna go over some explorers and explorer types, and then I'm gonna go over some of the issues that you may have if you're gonna buy one, some things to look for, and why getting one used is probably a good idea. First off, let's look at some of the types of explorers. We've already shown um, the Gibson Explorer that I've owned in the past. This is a Hammer XT standard. Unfortunately, this is Chinese. Um, actually, Hammer, not Hammer. If you have the opportunity of getting a US made um, Hammer standard, I would highly recommend it. They're very well made and highly sought after. And again, high quality. Next up is the LTD or ESP, more than likely LTD EX series. This came after a Gibson lawsuit as the um, MX series um, used to actually emulate the Gibson Explorer, but that kind of stopped. So now they're a little pointier or they're more expensive and they're the snake bite, which is pointy-ish. Next up is the Aria ZZ series. So basically, um, this one is Korean, but a lot of them are Japanese. Um, they're few and far between now, but if you can get them, generally you can get them at a lower price. And they are bolt-on, but with a glossed neck. These are absolutely solid guitars. Um, the stock pickups that are in them are actually very good, and I'm having a hard time switching them over to something nicer because they're doing their job. But look at the headstock. And next up, and last on my list at least, my absolute favorite. This, or these, are the um, Jackson Kellys. Unfortunately, this one currently has a Floyd Rose Special in it and cannot hold strings on it to save its life. Uh, this one is Japanese made. Anyway, they're uh, a little differently shaped and the bodies on them are smaller than the Explorer but um, personally I find there's a little more access to the higher frets and it's not as bulky as an Explorer would be not that that's bad for the Gibson branded Explorers but uh, I personally find that these are more comfortable to play Explorers are very cool shaped um, they are metal as you may put them they can also fall under the kind of classic, uh, if it's a Karina shape, actually if it's, or sorry, not shape, uh, Karina type, um, actually any type of Explorer can kind of work as a classic and a metalish uh, type guitar and they're always cool. The only problem is in this day and age, they're sort of played out. Um, I don't really follow any of the newer music or at least I don't think I do, uh, but they're kind of few and far between as more people are looking into the kind of super strat type shape um, or off super strat type shape um, with like multi, uh, multi scale type fretboards and seven and eight strings. So Explorers, they're not kind of in fashion, which Brings me to my next section, why you might want to get them used. Uh, used, especially if you're looking into like a Jackson Kelly, you can generally get them fairly cheap because they're not as popular anymore. Um, people buy them generally because of like James Hetfield or Marty Friedman, or I'm 
sure there's a whole bunch of others. Uh, but those are always the two kind of big ones for myself. N James Hetfield especially, people buy that because of James Hetfield a, a lot. But you'll buy it because of that and then try and sell it. And what will end up happening is people are looking at, you know, more sensible, as you may call it, uh, type guitars. And it's harder to move those NV type guitars. So you may be able to get yourself a deal. Generally, um, an Explorer type shape guitar, if it's not US made, <clears throat> you can get them anywhere between... I'd say $150 and $350. Now, some things to consider if you're getting an Explorer-type guitar, whether it's new or used, you may get some uh, bumps and dings in them, especially here on the upper fin or here on the rear fin, I guess you would call it. Uh, just stems from people playing with straps and kind of walking into doorways, which is generally how it works. Or you got a nice studio desk like this. If you're playing while you're recording, you go to put your headphones on. You got to grab your headphones or what have you. And you turn and you nail the desk. Don't do that. Be very, very careful. Uh, but again, this is another cool thing because you don't really notice it that much. Um, so you can kind of get a deal on pricing if that's the case. And it does happen quite often. And the last thing I kind of want to go over with uh, Explorer type guitars, the cases. If you're looking to get one of these, generally they do not come with a case unless it is a US made um, instrument. Some of the lower end Gibsons, again, <sighs> so I think right now it's like the Gibson Tribute or the B2 series. Those come with gig bags. Um, in Canadian, they're about $1,700 and they come with a gig bag. Uh, so a case, generally you're, you're spending more than $2,000 on an instrument that used to be $1,200, um, and no real changes to them, but, uh, you're, that's how you're getting the cases if you're spending that much. Otherwise you're spending two or $300 on actually getting a, like a Gibson case or a Jackson form fitting case or what have you. They're also absolutely friggin' huge. For the most part the jackson kelly ones are nicer because they're form fitting um so it kind of just does the shape of the guitar but if you're getting a gibson um or a, an ltd or esp at that point you're looking at getting a case that is you gotta cover the guitar so basically your case is going to be from here to up here and it's gonna give you a little bit of play um, from the bottom and the top of the guitar. So it's going to be absolutely huge. So there you have it. That is the Explorer guitar and should you buy one. Nine out of 10 of these Explorer or Explorer type guitars, you're going to actually find EMGs in them. Um, I have EMGs in four out of five of my Explorer type guitars. And the two Gibsons that I owned, I slapped EMGs in as well. So hopefully that answers your question whether you want to actually purchase an Explorer type guitar, um, if that's something that you wanna get. I do have a previous video that you may wanna check out, which is Flying V's and should you buy one. So very quickly, if you're unfamiliar, this is an Explorer type guitar, and this is a Flying V type guitar. Explorer type guitar, Gibson Flying V guitar. Oh man, this is not an Explorer type guitar. Oh, little different. And this is a Firebird, so it, it kind of is shaped so somewhat like a, an Explorer, but it is not. And you can do some cool chicken picking on this. And this is a Martin D35. Looks cool in the back. What the damn hell?